way better to give in Watch the colors fade as you slip away Choosing not to swim There you are. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Alex, boy, look at you. Look, Why? Look at that. It's Jamie, down. right? It's Jamie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. So is this like your New York kind of compound? Is that what's happening here? Yes, this is my this is my apartment. You're getting up close and personal in the in the life of um yeah, in the life yeah. of an incredible artist with an incredible career as well. Like, oh my god, Alex, boy, we're such fans. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for having me tonight. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. That couch looks amazing. No Sunday scaries with Hallie's poor in that. <laughs> no, no Sunday scaries, just Sunday comfies. That's exactly. Well, Hallie, you know, by the way, your, your EP, Hard Like a Thunder, it's out now. It's wonderful. But uh, Hallie, I, I wanted to ask you, I was randomly listening to the Sound of Music soundtrack the other day. Yeah. Um, and it was serendipitous because, you know, Hallie, as a young child in Denver, and you were singing, you know, the sound of the bon traps, like to anyone that would listen, right? It's true. Yep. That was, that really was a big part of my starting out in music was singing around the house. Um, and I love Julie Andrews. I love that opening scene where she runs onto the hill. It's like, <laughs> oh, the hills are alive. And I, you know, I started actually as singing, you know, jazz and all sorts of genres and musical theater too. And so... Yeah, so that's close to my heart. Of course, of course, and, of, and your grandfather as well, right? Like he was a jazz pianist. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a jazz pianist. He did it all by ear. He didn't. Um, he learned to read music later in his life, but most of it was all by ear. And um, he actually passed away um, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, I miss him a lot, and. Um, he was he was an amazing man and I would you know we would play duets on the piano he taught me how to play a few um one of the duets was something he called Russian chopsticks um yep. which if anybody knows piano they know like regular chopsticks but he called it Russian chopsticks because he did it in this kind of brooding minor key and so he would do the lower bass part and I would do the right yeah my God, he sounds like an incredible guy. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so music kind of runs in your family a little bit then, Hallie, especially in Colorado growing up, yeah? I would say so, yeah. I think, you know, everybody has a passion for music in some way, shape, or form, but I am the first person in my family to ever try to make a go out of a real career in music. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that has, that it wasn't always, you know... Um, uh, easy because there was no real mold for how to do this life. You know, you see like I, my parents were very, very business oriented. And so it was always like, okay, you can do music, but you should do it on the side right. and then get a job that pays you money <laughs> right. as your main money maker. And, um, and so I feel like I'm still kind of catching up to my own artistry and embracing mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, no, like you're allowed to do this, like you're allowed to pursue it with your whole heart. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we all have those uh, inner inner demons that get in the way, but we try to just push through. Totally. Totally. Holly. But you've, you've had such a great career, both artistically and also like, I guess, in the corporate world, quote unquote. But yeah, like, I, th I think it's fascinating the balance that you've made, Holly. But, um, but let me ask you about the New York music scene, because I think it's fascinating and um, I mean, the songwriting that you have in Heart Like a Thunder is easily your best, Hallie. I mean, but you're based in New York, like I told like, like I told the audience. And I'm curious what the songwriting thing is in there, right? So obviously yeah. here in Nashville, you know, Songwriters Town, yeah. 95, kind of like totally. a machinery. What's, yeah. the, what's the songwriting scene right now in 2023, 2024 in New York? Like? That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, 
the songwriting scene in New York, you know, it's so eclectic. The thing that I love about New York um, is that there is a space for every kind of songwriting and every kind of genre of music. Mm. Whereas I feel like in a few other, you know, I'm originally from Denver. Right. Um, I've spent a little bit of time in Nashville. Um, you lived in L.A., of course. I lived in L.A. Um, what's different about New York, I feel like, is... I get to brush shoulders with some of the greatest songwriters in different genres and kind of build something new. Although, you know, it's it's such a it's a very cutthroat scene, just like it is in, you know, L.A. and Nashville. Um, But I am so inspired by the local scene here, especially, you know, in my world, which is like indie folk um, and Americana. There's just amazing writing happening and it's all very original. I think Nashville is better about churning out like um, tried and true methodology for pop hits. Right. And New York is not that. I mean, it might be more like the hip hop pop space, um, but in folk, um, I'm just hearing some really original things coming out of the folk scene that I find very inspiring. Um, Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit about the, the New York scene. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, you know, Nashville, you know, it's just, it's very cookie cutter sometimes, the process. So I yeah. think that's cool. I think that's cool, Hallie. But, but you know, we touched on LA for a second. Let me ask you about that. Yeah. When you go to Loyola Marymount there, you know, you pursue this double major. And, um, you know, tell me about the focus that you've had, both in school and like in your career, kind of like managing an incredible music because you're an incredible artist, but also like excelling in the corporate world. I mean, that's not easy to do and you've done it and you do it well. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, it is, uh, God, where to even start with that? It's such a journey. It's a really weird life. Actually. It's almost like putting on a costume and getting on stage and being a character. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like that's what I'm doing. Like I, put on my blazer and I go into my corporate meeting and then I'm like corporate Hallie and then I go play my gigs and I'm music Hallie and and I used to really judge myself because there's such a trope of like selling out or being you know the starving artist yeah um and it's really easy to just just be really down on yourself about whether or not you're a real artist, if if music is not always the source of your income. Sure. Um, so, oh, excuse me. My cat has joined us. Uh, there he goes. Uh, this is Mac. Mac. He's the, pro- um, the producer intern. And uh, yeah. He is, he is the producer intern. Very curious about the mic situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have. So after college in L.A., I was planning on staying in L.A., but I actually um, ended up getting sick i got mono okay and moved back to denver and then after that i started singing for opera colorado and i started singing for a few regional opera companies not able to pay rent um and so i got this internship at this random tech company and have been basically doing tech sales ever since because the cco of the company at the time was a songwriter there we go. And he took pity upon me and he was like, you know, I like you. Like, I'll let you have a, a real job. So he promoted me. And then I've just been doing, you know, account management in tech ever since because it's flexible. It's yeah. remote. I can I actually have done like four tours, national tours while working my day job on the road playing shows, because, you know, as long as you're in a city and you can connect to wi-fi right right you know so there's i guess the message uh this is a long-winded response but the message that i would love to tell you know younger songwriters i guess is that you know everybody can craft their own version of the dream it doesn't have to look like the starving artist thing if you don't want it to be or it can you can wait tables and be a barista and bartend and have more flexibility in like being able to quit jobs and pick up tours or you can be a gigging musician and you can play in other people's bands and you can get awesome at your instrument and 
make you know your primary source of income be from gigging or you can pick up another day job and the thing is i uh, that i finally in my as i enter my 30s i've started to accept is like it's okay to craft your own kind of career in this space because none of it looks the same it's a less kind of sexy answer as the like patty smith artists of like the 70s grunge in new york city but you know no but you're totally totally smart and totally right ali i mean right now it's no secret you know how hard it is to make a living as a musician so and 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 everyone is just hustling you know side hustling double gigging so you know the fact that you are able to kind of cover your expenses i mean a song like heart like thunder like you know the songwriting there would that be able to come around if you're just like worried about where you're gonna pay your bills and your food i don't know but at least yeah, you're, no, at least you're giving yourself like that oxygen in your creativity. I think it's cool. Well, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, I appreciate you. I um, heart like thunder actually came about during a period of um, no employment because I was. This was in heart like thunder came to me over a few years and bits and pieces, and mm. finally finished in like April of 2020 during peak pandemic when we right. were in lockdown. And that was when I was back in Colorado um, quarantining at my family's cabin and like no cell service, no Wi-Fi. It was like truly off the grid. I didn't have running water for a few days and like all the nice. pipes were frozen. I mean, it was like truly what you would imagine for like back country. And, um, and I just was able to, like you said, the oxygen thing, like when I am able to give myself time and space, then the creativity comes. But like when I'm running around my busy schedule, like working, 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 grocery shop, like doing all the daily things of yeah. life, the song lyrics, like sometimes they just do not come. And then I have sure. to realize like, okay, time to slow down. Yeah. I, I totally, totally relate to that. Just giving yourself that time out is when like things come, you know, for sure. Yeah. Holly, let me ask you about Shenandoah as well. I mean, I mean, because Hard Like Thunder, love it. Probably one of my faves, but Shenandoah is beautiful. Obviously, it was inspired oh, by the, you. by the, you know, the classical folk songs by Bonnie Light Horseman. Tell me a little bit yep. about like, you know, I mean, you do such an incredible job, but like, why did you pick it? And just like, kind of like the backstory with this one. I have always loved that um, classic American folk song, Shenandoah, and ha have sang it for years in different forms, like in choir or at a funeral or at like a wedding, you know, big events, because it's such a classic, um, you know, American traditional song. Yeah. Um, and when I heard Bonnie Light Horseman do their first record of all of the English folk song adaptations, I was kind of like, oh, wait, you can do your own thing with these? Like, I thought you had to just follow a, I don't know, a certain mold or something. Right. Um, And so that kind of like gave me a certain amount of freedom. And then what I did is I just looked up online, like, has anybody done a version that I envision in my head yet? Like, is this already out there? Because mm. I I had a vision very clearly in my head of what I wanted. Um, and no one had done anything of what I kind of had pictured. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I need to do it. I need to do it myself. Oh, um, so that's how that came about. And um yeah, I mean, he's being so lovey right now. Sorry, oh, my God. little kitten. Yeah, yeah. For the audio audience that can't see the video, you know, the cat here is. Uh, yeah, he's posing. He's being a ham for the for the camera. He's being a total ham. Yeah. Oh, goodness, I love it. I love it, Hallie. Well, look, I, I think you're gonna play a song for us, and I don't want to take too much of your. I would time. love to. But let me ask you about something really cool about you, Hallie, and it is, you know, you're obviously a person that is, you know, you like to give. Secret to living is giving. And like your big yep. poverty alleviation and like you were a mentor at like, you know, in LA at El Espejo, you know, a organization that serves to yeah. educate and mentor, you know, inner city youth and all that kind of like you're a person through your art and through yourself as a human that you like to give back. Tell us a little bit about, about that, about that fulfillment kind of that comes from that and how it affects your, your music. 
Yeah, that well, first, thank you so much for taking the time to um know that about me. I appreciate you. Um so I have in another life I really wanted to be um an OBGYN or like a, you know, women's crisis kind of counselor or you know, something involving feminism and women's health. Um I have always loved children. I've always loved working with children. Um and it's a it's just a cause that's near and dear to my heart. I try to continue that advocacy though, I will say I have have kind of let my foot off the gas in the last couple of years because the political landscape um is just so damn discouraging for me from that perspective that I try not to focus too much on it so that I can keep kind of my head above water because I get sure. really, uh, you know, depressed. But um, something that I actually did um, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, um, I actually incorporated it into my touring. So I started selling merch as a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood. Um, and so I continue to do things like that throughout my life. I um, I just did a, um, uh, uh, you know, get out the vote campaign um, through like a letter writing group in Denver. And I continue to try to do that, though I do feel like there's a little bit of a a hole in my heart the size of Ellis Bejo because I haven't done that in, in a few years. Um I need to find something like that in New York, but, but yeah, that definitely is an important part of my life. And I think that, you know, actually there's this artist in New York, um, her name is Margaret Glasby and I love her. She's an icon for me. And she said, um, a few weeks ago on Instagram live, she said that she views what she does in the music industry as civil service because she's trying to just give her music to the people to give people a chance to connect with their emotions right and a chance to connect with one another in this like super technological world um where even being in the room with someone like live is more rare i really loved that perspective she had so i'm gonna try to view what i do in music as civil service rather than thinking about it as like the entertainment biz or or getting all caught up in like ticket sales and sure. the minutia of the business side. Cause that stuff will get you down. I mean, if you're only focused on like the number of followers and tickets, you're not going to find the fulfillment. But if you focus on connecting with people and sharing a moment, like the moment you and I are sharing now, which I'm very grateful for, um, for a chance to even, you know, talk about my music with someone that you know is passionate about it too um that's that's what it's really all about so yeah yeah couldn't have said it any better Helen. thank you Amazing. i mean if you want to take us away with a song would be would be honored i would love to okay mackie it's time to get off my lap here we go
Hallie's poor. My chills have chills. What have you done to us? God. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you for having me tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Nice conversation. Absolutely. And uh, we're so excited for the EP and for the, you know, I'm sure you're going to tour next year and hope to catch you around. Yep. But thank you for your time, Hallie. Thank you, Jamie. Have a great one. You as well. Yeah.